topic today is um, everything goes across God's desk. Now, yesterday morning when I got up, <clears throat> Shabbat, I, uh, I told my wife, my spirit man is absolutely unsettled. Uh, not not out of fear, but just sideways. I mean, I was I was pacing the floor in the in the living room, dining room area. Just like when I get up in the morning, I'm very focused. I got I got things I got to do. I have things planned, and I'm I'm regimented. And uh, yesterday morning was a, a bit different. And she said, "Well, what what's this all about?" And I said. I don't really know, but I said, I think it's got a lot to do with what I got to bring forth on Sunday morning. And I had not even written a letter, a note, a sentence on what it is that I was supposed to, to share, or at least what I thought I was supposed to share. And uh, so it's just interesting how, how things work. Uh, because I'll tell you, you you guys know me. I'm I'm very vocal on on the political end of this thing, and I I go at hard uh, the crap that's going on in the world. And yet, uh, you know, we are supposed to bring hope and 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 uh, solace as uh, ministers of Yahweh's word to to the people. But you know something, guys? Even Yeshua absolutely went after the AOCs of his time. And he got into politics as well. And I'm not using that as an apologetic form of, of the way I teach. But uh, you, you cannot ignore the things of this world. And yes, uh, look, we've... We've got to be aware of what's going on around us, okay? Uh, let me just leave it at that. There's so many things we need to share, and then you go, oh, God, where do I start? Where do I start? So here's where we start. I don't know. I think most of you know that that Satan himself answers to the Father for all his actions. And in some cases, has to have permission before he can act. He still roams this earth to and fro, seeking whom he can devour. I mean, that's a given. And for some people, that's going to be an eye-opener. An eye-opener. Well, you might say, look, I don't ask God permission for everything like what, uh, what to wear or what to eat. I, I, I know, guys. And no, that's, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about things that will affect humanity or future history. He, Satan, reports on all as his activities as do all the angelic forces in the heavenly realm. It's like the father said to Satan, you know, about Job, okay, you can, you can, you can have him, don't kill him. And that's kind of what come to mind here in the last couple of weeks. The Father's will, my brothers and sisters, will be done in heaven and in earth. It will be. You, you, you nor I can get away from that, nor can we change it. You see, if you don't understand, we, we share with you that this world is being set up for destruction. And using humanity, obviously, as being the accomplice to the dark demonic influences that are rampants across this world. And unfortunately, most people are sitting at the wrong table. The wrong table and getting fed. Yeah, lies, poison. Look, 
the two witnesses who will be seen or revealed soon enough to do as they see fit to get mankind to repent and change from their wicked ways. It's not an allegory, my brothers and sisters. As some have said, they are real and through, again, the Father's perfect timing will manifest as to meet his agenda, not ours. Not ours. You know, people say, oh, this, he's got to come, you know, this, he's going to be this, he's going to be that. Just hold off. Let the Father deal with it. Now, they're going to go at all of Israel, all 12 tribes, because of their failure to comply to the instruction book. And that has been our demise. And it must come to an end or none of his creation will survive. That's how much influence darkness is going to have over the next whatever the time is. In Matthew 24, 22, it reads, Indeed, if the length of this time had not been limited, no one would survive but for the sake of of those who have been chosen, a heavy-duty sentence, its length will be limited. And it's not talking about daylight hours. It's talking about all the AI, Mark, Beast, anti-Messiah, wars, all that. It, it's all encompassing. It's all part of what's going on. Now, you, you know, We've, we've heard so many people talk about the fact that uh, these witnesses are going to go after Jews because they're in Jerusalem. Well, the boys may have a jet plane or two to bomb around on. I know they're, what it says, the city of the seven hills and the place where Messiah was crucified. The place where he was crucified was through the authority of Rome. These witnesses, my brothers and sisters, are going to go after the ruling elite in particular. The ruling elite of all the nations. The whole world will feel the power of their authority given or allowed by the creator himself over the creator's test. Signs off on it. Go at it, boys. And this all, of course, happened because of the separation between north and south after the death of Solomon. Good old King Solomon. Now, personally, I think it's going to be heaviest against the, the north. Israel, Joseph, Ephraim, Goy. Just because of numbers. But not limited to them alone. Judah will feel the wrath of the Almighty as well. Matthew 4, Matthew 5, rather, 45. Matthew 5, 45. Then you will become children of your Father in heaven, for he makes a sunshine on the good and the bad, people alike. And he sends rain to the righteous and to the unrighteous alike. Now, this, this whole few verses in front of 45 or 5 of Matthew is about how you treat your enemy. And I've said before, uh, I truly believe that the enemy that he's talking about is within the, the 12 tribes itself. Uh, Satan's my enemy, and I don't love him. So I'll just leave it at that. You see, we all live under one sky. It's how we protect ourselves. Through what? Through following the instruction book. That's how we're going to survive the onslaught. The whole world is about to be spanked. And it ain't going to be pretty. And we got to get that through our, our heads. 
the rain on the just and the unjust alike. Guys, it's going to rain down hell fury. So you better have your house in order. You know, scripture talks about the fact that it's going to be like in the days of Noah, like the days that are ahead of us, the times of tribulation, so on and so forth. He will protect those, let me say that this way, he will protect those who he needs. Now that is a pretty tough statement, but he will. Those who he will use and who can be trusted. You see, you and I, for the most part, cannot hope or even come close to what the Father knows. Only what he has revealed in and through his, his word, written and living. Like I, he, he even talks about the fact how his living word doesn't even know the day he's going to pull the trigger. Revelation knowledge, discernment, are going to pay, play rather such a huge role, such a huge part in true believers' lives in the time that is left. You can sit on the bus, but if the driver doesn't know where he's going, it's going to go where it shouldn't. Let me put it just that way. In the time that has left my brothers and sisters before all hell breaks loose. And even then, it will be such a precious thing that helps his children survive. Knowledge and discernment. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of the word. You got to know the word. You got to know what he is going to do and why and to whom. Then you need discernment as the days become darker and darker and you need to have a light shone on your path. And some are questioning. If we're in the tribulation time already, at least as scripture describes it, well, for sure we're in a time or times of tribulation. We are. I mean, you all know that everything's upside down. You, you, you see what's going on and uh, like the opening of the Olympics and, and the atrocities that darkness is shoving through their woke ideology to absolutely put the middle finger of fate into God's face. And you have this she bitch sitting there with a halo over her head representing what was in the painting of the Last Supper of Messiah. <laughs> I mean, they are absolutely, I'm talking darkness, not the people. They don't know sick them from, get them. They're run by the demons of hell. They're in your face. They don't give a damn anymore. They just want the believers. They want Israel out of the way. Why? Because we belong to the Father. They don't. There isn't one of those who sat at that, whatever that was, that has a relationship with Messiah. Not one. And they stick it in not only the Father's face, but our faces as well. And that includes all the lies and deceit that's going on within the political realm, no matter what country you live in. And like I said, some are questioning whether we're in the tribulation or not. Personally, I think we got a ways to go. More time is needed to set up the rise of the anti-Messiah and the degradation of humanity. You wouldn't think that it's going to get much worse than what it is now. 
but it will. And one of the things I can advise you is don't become complacent. Don't become complacent and say, well, that's over there, or I can, you know, whatever, whatever. You see, my brothers and sisters, we are no longer living in the plains. We have, we have already stepped onto the foothills of time. And the mountains are approaching. And when they start to tremble and the earth shakes, people are going to realize it's checkmate. Humanity are the pawns. Now the Heavenly Father has his big boys getting ready on both sides of this thing. Okay? Because it's all about choice. He keeps saying, choose wisely. Choose wisely. And he allows certain things to happen on it with darkness to wake people up. But it's still a personal choice, even though he knows how we're going to choose. But he wants to reiterate that it is about choice and what you and I must do. getting the boys ready on both sides, my brothers and sisters. And in every generation, he did that. And now, especially in this one, only because of, uh, of the availability of, of uh, the media, news, whatever, you know, it's instantaneous, right? See, the players behind the scenes are working. And it's not some snot-nosed, wet-behind-the-ears individual with a new word every day or some kid with long hair and a pea shooter laying in an elevated position. The players behind the scenes in every country, 70 of them, are pushing the same agenda that will be played out according to what has been written. Prophecy? Over and over again, we bring out this statement that the dark anointing is spread out over the entire earth, my brothers and sisters. But you see, the light can only shine or shine if the switch is turned on. And if you and I don't turn on the switch, it stays dark. When I say you and I, I'm talking about the remnant. But even personally, we have to shine the light of the truth of his holy word and his holy son. Each and every opportunity we get without, without shoving the light bulb down somebody's throat. See, it's like a plague. It's like an infection perpetrated by the gates of hell and the who we find in this generation, although they had them in all the generations before. It's a fight within Israel, not the land, the people. One buying against the other. One holier than the other. Everything is being manipulated from, from what we breathe to what we drink, to what we eat, to what we hear, to what we see. And most, my brothers and sisters, are like the frog in the boiling water. and They have no clue. There's no such thing as unbiased truth anymore, at least not in the news feeds. They're not news. They're propaganda uh, uh, avenues, right? And anymore, it's all allowed by darkness, big money, the love of which is the root of all evil. They're addicted to power and excess. Access? Too much? You know, I've actually got to the point that the only guy that I believe on the news is the weatherman. Now that big statement, because we said 
you know, the, you could never trust the weather man because from one day to the next it would change. But I tell you, anymore, he's more right on than anybody else. North and south. Israel, Joseph, Ephraim, and then Judah have fought for millennia. And the temple prostitutes are showing their wares, my brothers and sisters, across this globe. Or the lack thereof. Their nakedness is being exposed. The skirts are being lifted. And seemingly they're at the beck and call of all the religious institutions. They suck in the people who are still sucking on the mammary glands, having a, the milk of laziness provided instead of searching out the deeper truths of scriptures and the meat we need to survive. Matthew 7, verse 13 and 14. I'm going to give you a different spin on this after I read it. Matthew 7, 13, and 14. Go in through the narrow gate, for the gate that leads to destruction is wide, and the road is broad, and many travel it. Now, gate also means road or path. An unobstructed. By what? By the flesh. Your flesh. My flesh. This is what's holding people back. It's like the camel going through the eye of a needle. We have to subdue our flesh to get through that narrow, narrow road. But it is a narrow gate and a hard road that leads to life, and only few find it. It reads to I'm, I'm living. The word few is also used as a time, a limited time, or an opening of opportunity that is given to one's life, like in a historical event sort of thing. So the road that leads to life and only a few capitalize on the opportunity of a time slot that they have been given to choose correctly. Puts a bit of a different spin on it. There's a reckoning taking place, and it's called choice. The milk toast tip through, tiptoe through the tulip's attitude are making people fall to the wayside. The truth seekers and prayer warriors, the intercessors, the true army of Yahweh. Not all, my brothers and sisters, are in the Father's army. The Father chooses his warriors, his leaders, those who will not falter or go AWOL. He has the cream of the crop at his beck and call. The rest of his kids benefit, just like those that benefited from Gideon's army. Now, cream can be molded and manipulated. Milk is just milk. Like when they first come out with 2%. That was the stuff we used to feed to the pigs after we went through the cream separator on the farm. Like, you know, it was way, it was ugh. Tried it. I keep telling my wife, don't you ever buy that? Don't you ever buy that? Cream. Is the top, which is held up by the milk. You can look at that any way you want. You see, you and I have a role to play. You can whip cream and it can be turned into other uses. You cannot whip milk. 
talk that way. It has no cream in it anymore. It, it, after it goes through the separator, although maybe a little bit, and you might have a whoops, but no. Milk is milk. It has no cream, and you won't get any till the cows come home, as they say, pun intended. It just stays the same. Cannot be used for any other purposes that cream can be used for. I hope you see the analogy. I hope you see how this makes sense. And in every fight, the general public stays home. The generals go into action. The train go into war. And the rest benefit. It's still on. One, but only a few there are. You and I, we know the truth, and we're not going to be sucked in by the noise of the crowd. We will stand and we will not falter. Not bowing down to darkness, the system of the dark anointing. You know, and, and one of my concerns is for the Nominal believer out there, the, the Christian, the believer, who buys into the system and lose their right to the life in the new heaven and earth because they bought into, listen, a savior of flesh, not the spirit. Because that's all we're offering out there. Oh, we got to save your flesh. There's a bird flu coming. We got to save your flesh. Here, I got something for you. The mark, as I've shared before, and will again, is not the number of a man, but the number of man. What is man? Man is a carbon being. Now, this is my pet peeve. It's an SP 101, and you can take it or leave it. The hook. Carbon is the hook that deceives 666. You see, what do we hear out there? Oh, we must save the planet. Forget humanity. Now, Gaia, Mother Earth, is to be worshipped. I had to look this up, but when you hear about Mother Earth, you might think of modern environmentalism or New Age spirituality. But the idea of Earth as our mother is as old as civilization itself. The Greeks called her Gaia, a name that came from the word for Earth itself, Gai, G-E. Among the oldest beings in the cosmos, she was the beginning of all life. And Gaia was a mother of all creation in mythology of the Greeks. And like any mother, she would be fiercely protective of her children. Known as Terra, ever heard of Terra Firma? <laughs> to the Romans, with the equivalents around the globe, Gaia was an elemental power of fertility, creation, maternal love. Gaia was a loving mother who shared everything she had with her children, but she could unleash terror on anyone who threatened them. Sound familiar? Of the woke of today, children, little ones come to mind how they're being treated, you know, and we think of that, that uh, old memory, no, no, or not a memory, it's a, it's a rhyme, what, chicken little or story, the roof, the sky is falling, people believed it, got sucked in until somebody stood up and said, hey, the king is naked. Anything come to mind when we read that as a society that we live in? Look at the governments who threaten their citizens because we do not conform to the climate change agenda. Canada has a 
carbon tax on everything. It wouldn't surprise me a bit that in Canada, at some time in the future, should uh, the soy boys stay in power, that they don't start taxing uh, brown beans in a can because usually that uh, perpetuates flatuation and uh, flatulence is one of the things that creates a, uh, a hole in the atmosphere. So I'm being facetious in this, but guys, this is how stupid people are. And in, if you ever want to look at the taxation and the way that this carbon things and the way Canada taxes the carbon, it's carbon upon carbon upon carbon. The farmers are taxed because cows fart. The milk is being taxed because it's delivered by a diesel run truck. So there's carbon on the milk, carbon on the fuel, carbon on the electricity being generated, carbon, car, carbon tax, carbon tax, again and again. And I'll tell you, the people of Canada, unfortunately, are not fed up enough. They take this bull crap from their leaders because it's for the good of the climate. It's for the good of Mother Earth. See where I'm getting? Getting to? You see, when we read that, and as a society, we have to look at the governments who threaten their citizens who do not conform. It's the same thing as Gaia, right? She would unleash terror on anyone who threatened her ways. Canada obviously being the biggest atrocity to this cult. Soon enough, my fear, and I don't, I'm not afraid, but my concern, that's a better word. My concern is that soon enough, we will see in the verbiage from the who we fund, let's just call it that, and to those who comply, the leaders, that we have to protect Mother Earth. Those words are going to start coming out if they haven't already in some places. It is our obligation to Mother Earth to protect her. And that means we have to eliminate, uh, what? How many billions of people? Because you're consuming too much energy, you're producing too much this or that. It's about the elimination of Jehovah's children. See, your life as a worshiper of Messiah and his truth instead of your carbon footprint will put you in a category of planet haters. And those folks need to have an attitude adjustment. And while you keep your heads straight, and everyone else is losing theirs. The ones that are losing theirs seem to be the ones that rule and reign. Uh, there's a poem by Kipling uh, that says something to that effect. That you'll be a man, my son. You can keep your head about you. Anyway, look it up sometime, read it. It's not a bad read. See, the remnant will stand and fight. Some are going to be executed. Some will die along with the milk and the whey. Not lose their salvation, not lose their crown, but scripture talks about it. Yet in in, in the fact that they retain their crowns and, and people think that they're going to live in this cum, kumbaya world and get raptured out of here and, and what? Like the old prophet said, people are going to take their dead, walk up to their pastor and say, what the F were you telling us? My child died, 
because I believe you. You see, there will be those who were executed for his name's sake. That happened in the past and ha it will happen in the present and it will happen in the future. And these, my brothers and sisters, according to scriptures, are the ones that are going to rule and reign with Messiah. Talking about reign, maybe a different one, but back to Matthew 4, 5, 45. Then you will become the children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun shine on the good and the bad, people alike, and he sends his reign to the righteous and the unrighteous alike. We are not going to be taken, <clears throat> excuse me, out of this realm. And all of a sudden, we're going to get a free ride into the next one. That ain't going to happen. Till after the white throne judgment as spoken of in Revelations, <clears throat> excuse me, Revelations 21 to 6. What we need to understand is the Heavenly Father is not a respecter of persons, but of the faith and faithfulness within that person. That's what he can use. That's what he wants to use. This last move of the Creator is the one called faith. You either believe or you don't. That's it. The Father isn't going to force any one of us. Now, he may bounce you around the walls a little bit to kind of encourage you to on the right path, but he won't make a decision for you or me. You, I, got to do that on our own. This, this move for some to get out of Egypt, the system, has to do with the faith in one's life, not the physical move to Israel. Well, that will happen at some point for those who make it through to the end. The tribes of the north have again moved from the promised land, Canaan, back to Egypt. And most will stay with the liars and the melodies of death. They will not realize the power within establishing his holy covenant as the thing that he wants established, made available to everyone who believes from Noah to Yeshua. It's about the covenant. And when he returns, he will make a new covenant with his children. Let's go to, now you don't have to go there. I'm just going to read it. Ezekiel 37, 26. I will make a covenant of peace with them. An everlasting covenant I will give them, increase their numbers, and my sanctuary among them forever. You are the ones upon whom the ends are written, my brothers and sisters. You are the ones who will raise the dead, heal the sick, experience the blind to see again, and watching the lame walk. Everybody think that's all fast. Nah, it's right around the corner. It's even happening today as we speak. Think not. First Corinthians 10, starting in verse 1. For brothers, I don't want you to miss the significance of what happened to our fathers. All of them were guided by a pillar of cloud, and they all passed through the sea. And in connection with the cloud and with the sea, they all immersed themselves into Moshe. They all ate the same food from the Spirit, and they all drank the same drink from the spirit, for they drank from the spirit sent rock, which followed them, and that rock was the Messiah. Yet with the majority of them, God was not pleased. So their bodies were strewn across the desert. Why? Because of unbelief. No faith. Now these things took place as a prefigurative historical event. Warning us not to set our hearts on evil as they did in Egypt. Don't be idolaters, as some of them were, as the Tanakh puts it. 
the people sat down to eat and drink and they got up to indulge in rivalry. And let us not engage in sexual immorality as some did with the consequences that 23,000 died in a single day. And let us not put the Messiah to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by snakes. And don't grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroying angel. Well, I hope you're not into sexual immorality. And I hope that you are not going to be destroyed by snakes. But I'll tell you, there's a lot of grumbling. Maybe you better take some of these verses to heart. These things, and, and that includes me. I'm, I'm not picking on you. These things happen to them as prefigurative historical events, and they were written down as a warning to us who are living in the Arachad Hayamayim. Now, that, that's upon those who the ends are written for the ages to come. Think on those things, Ephraim. Thank him always for the provision of your needs, even before you need them. And never be apologetic for that under any circumstances, because it is like what? Putting pearls in front of swine. Matthew 7, 6. Don't give to the dogs what is holy. And don't throw your pearls to the pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and attack you. What does that mean? Well, the pigs aren't going to attack you. The thing of this is that those folk who are the pigs, who are the dogs in society, will try. These are the ones that went back to Egypt, okay? The, the, these are the ones that will try to convert you to their way of thinking to the world of lies. And it is rampant across this, the face of this earth. You see, the Father is looking for people with a fire in their bellies and resisting the spirit of the anti-Messiah and not deviate from the truth of his word, his instructions. Not some bastardized version of truth run by the spirit of the anti-Messiah so prevalent in this day and age. The leader of late, representing Judah, voiced an opinion on the actions of North America, of the actions they must take. And in particular, he was talking to the United States of America and their government, that if its president or former president must be eliminated, that would be the fault of Iran. Why push that? I don't know. Do they want a nuke war or is Judah just angry with Ephraim speaking spiritually? Was he opening his mouth and saying something? Was he saying, step it up, boys, brothers, family? Remember, this is all about the father's kids and people don't get that. It's all about the tribes and where they are and how this is playing out in both the north and the south of Israel. Spiritually. There have been some good and some horrific leaders hell-bent on the destruction of the other tribes. <laughs> oh, man, it's been going on brother against brother. I mean... It, it just never seems to stop. And it will not change. So there's an awakening of the spirit in both. Then we can walk up that holy hill together. And personally, I believe that that is going to happen in some extent before Messiah comes. Will that be all the remnant? No, but it will be, I believe, a representation of both. Israel, Joseph, Ephraim, and Judah, Benjamin.
Yet the leaders must resolve this tribal warfare before, I believe, the rise of the Antimessiah or in the first part of the tribulation period. SP 101, guys. That, that's not some, the Lord said this to me. If it was, I'd tell you, and I'd be a lot more careful how I bring it forth. There are many within Judah that believe on the Messiah, guys, many. We have to show solidarity in the spirit. We have to show that into the spirit realm. We have to do all we can to usher in these end times events. Again, SP 101. Or is it just my wishful thinking, my flesh? But I see some things that that as the whole of Israel that has to be done. To repeat again what I said earlier about that individual, if that individual is eliminated according to that speech, it would be the fault of Iran. And the government of the United States would be obligated to turn Iran into a parking lot, according to Bibi. Are they all part of the cabal, the global cabal, telegraphing what is about to happen? Let's say it plays out the way the leadership uh, is, is, is leading. The warmongers are salivating at the possibility of all the death and destruction, and others are seeing perhaps a, a possibility of using that scenario. Now remember, this has to go over the father's desk, the throne room. If it plays out this way, I'm not saying it is, the gates of hell will have developed a vaccine to overcome the fallout of the high levels of radiation using some iodine derivative with modified ingredients to control the population into compliance for their desired result. Comply or starve in Revelations. If you don't take the mark, if you don't comply, you will neither buy nor sell. Call what we have shared, the fight that has been going on since we left Egypt the first time. It's again, it is about his kids, his family. We need to look at this through those eyes. The remnant is for the most part within the goy, the heathen, the nations. And then you have the sons of darkness who are hell bent on doing Satan's work to destroy God's kid no matter who or where. The Father has always had a remnant, and that includes the ones within Judah. All are his servants that hold on to the truth, and more are realizing the truth every day. It's a blame game for control of the people of this world, and it makes it so sad, but it is not going to change. It has been written as to what's going to happen. The Father knows how sick humanity is and what they're going to do to one another. And that's why he said, look, if I don't interfere, there won't be any of you left. Yet you and I will not change the future. It has been foretold and written down and will play out the way the Father knew it. Oh, well, if you get into quantum physics, it's about the past, the present, and the future all being in one. The Father is all-encompassing. He sees it all on time. We don't have that. We don't have that for us. Sometimes we don't even have 2020 hindsight, hindsight because we refuse to listen. You see, you and I need to keep our lives squeaky clean. Don't quit. Push with all your might. Don't quit. Realize 
that what you're building today, now some of you are going to flip out on this one, but realize that what you're building today will perhaps be a great benefit for the future millennial reign of Messiah. Well, how's that? Well, I don't know. I don't know. This earth that we live on, and truly, I believe, will again see a population of flesh and blood in the range of eight to nine million people before Satan is unchained. To give everyone a taste of what humanity had to go through. It's about choice. It's not a free ride. But you got to get on the bus. That time at the end of the millennial reign will be like no other. Death, destruction, hate for Messiah in Jerusalem, his holy city, the, the war of Gog and Magog, Armageddon, and never again will people see such a thing. Gog, Magog, Armageddon aren't in the next few years, whatever, decade, two decades, who knows? No, guys, it's at the end of the millennial reign of Messiah. When, when, when Satan is less, let loose and he is going to absolutely indoctrinate, you think it's bad now and it's woke now? At the end of a thousand years, it is going to be undescribable in, 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 in this guy's life, in these terms where I live and where you live. It's going to be unreal. But Messiah will finally put an end to it and him. He'll go in the same place where the anti-Messiah and the beast reside. I close with this. It's hypothetical. But I share it to make you reflect, think, look at your own lives. If there were four things that you could save from losing, but you only had a choice of one. What would you say? Would it be your mother? Would it be your wife? Would it be your daughter? Would it be your wealth? Choose one of the four. Think about it for a minute. Your mother, your wife, your daughter, your wealth. Let me put it another way. Do you save your past? Do you save your present? Do you save the future? Do you save your stuff? Your past, the present, the future. Your stuff, your wealth. Choose wisely, guys. Choose wisely. We're so blessed to be part of the family of Messiah, of Yahweh, of Israel proper. And may it be that peace resides within his holy city and his children grow up. Stop all this infighting. Amen? Amen. Let's close. Father, oh, merciful, merciful judge. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the sermon. In all the lives, Father, of your children, in all of us, lead us and guide us, Father, to the perfect truth as only you can. Praise you and glorify you for it in Yeshua's precious name. 
Amen. Until next time, my brothers and sisters, have a glorious time. Have a glorious time.